Welcome uh, to another uh, Thursday evening uh, study from the book of Habakkuk and I hope that you're all keeping well and staying safe and knowing something of God's uh, peace in these days. The book of Habakkuk, this Old Testament uh, prophet who had a burden uh, from uh, the Lord, he lived in Judah in the Holy Land at a time of spiritual and moral decline and his burden was that things were slipping spiritually and morally and where was God in the midst of it all? How long, O Lord, must I cry for help is his cry. So can I invite you to lift your Bible and to open it at Habakkuk and we're going to read uh, just the first five verses of Habakkuk uh, chapter 2. So let me read it with you and then a short prayer as we begin our study. Habakkuk uh, chapter 2 and verse 1. I will stand at my watch and station myself on the ramparts. I will look to see what he will say to me. And what answer I am to give to this complaint. Then the Lord replied, Write down the revelation and make it plain on tablets, so that a herald may run with it. For the revelation awaits an appointed time. It speaks of the end and will not prove false. Though it linger, wait for it. It will certainly come and will not delay. See, he is puffed up. His desires are not upright. But the righteous will live by his faith. Indeed, wine betrays him. He is arrogant and never at rest. Because he is as greedy as the grave. And like death, is never satisfied. He gathers to himself all the nations and takes captive all the peoples. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this opportunity to be still, to open your precious word and to think together of what you are saying to us from it. We thank you for this prophecy of the Old Testament prophet Habakkuk. Lord, we thank you for this inspired word and we pray that you would come by your Holy Spirit and help us to understand and may we not only understand in our heads but we be warmed in our hearts and moved in our wills by the word of the living God and we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. So let's remind ourselves of the message of Habakkuk uh, so far. As I've said, this man who comes uh, with this burden um, on his, his heart. Uh, back at the beginning, in chapter 1, verses 2 to 4, we have Habakkuk's um, complaint. And he's concerned and wondering, where is God in the midst of all that's going then verses 5 um, to 11 of chapter 1, uh, the Lord gives his answer and it's a surprising and unexpected and even shocking answer. Habakkuk, I'm raising up the Babylonians. And then in chapter 1 from verse 12 uh, through to verse 17, we have Habakkuk's second complaint. Habakkuk is struggling with this message uh, from the Lord. But as we saw last week, it goes back to uh, basic principles, as we all must do. It goes back to the attributes of God and the character of God and the greatness and the holiness of God. And he rests on these things. He still has his questions. And then, as we saw last time, Habakkuk chapter 2 and verse 1, a really important text. And as we said, surely a word for many believers, for many of us in this 
lockdown. I will stand at my watch and station myself on the ramparts. I will look to see what he will say to me and what answer I am to give to this uh, complaint. So again, whatever our complaint, our concern, our problem may be, maybe something to do with this pandemic, maybe something to do with our own personal or family uh, circumstance, a difficult situation, a deep sadness, a darkness, a worry, a profound question of how long, O oh Lord, or where are you, Lord, in the midst of all of this. And, and the, the wonderful message here, the challenging message, go to the watchtower, go to the rampart, Go to the quiet place, uh, aloof as it were, from the rushing of this world, and wait upon the Lord. And so tonight um, we're going to, to look really at Habakkuk chapter 2, uh, verses 2 uh, to 5. And we see there in, in chapter 2 that the Lord answers right down the revelation and make it plain on tablets so that a herald may run with it. Habakkuk is told to, to write down the message that he receives and indeed the fact that he has written it down. Um, we are reading it um, this evening, uh, which is uh, uh, wonderful. Uh, verse 3, we're told that Habakkuk speaks of an appointed uh, time for the revelation awaits an appointed time and I want us to think about this it speaks of the end and will not prove false though it linger wait for it it will certainly come and will not delay Habakkuk is told by the Lord that there is an appointed time and that's true in every sense with God there is an appointed time uh, time and the time will come. Habakkuk, though it linger, you're to wait because it will come and not delay. I think we learn a good lesson when we are learn or are reminded that in the Christian experience we're to take the long view. Uh, we have been living uh, through in recent times um, an instant age. Uh, an age where everybody expects things to happen instantly, directly, immediately, quickly. And yet this lockdown has slowed all of that down, hasn't it? It's brought us into a, a lower gear, uh, a, a slower pace of life. And hopefully on exit, whenever that happens and in whatever way it happens, that we will learn uh, the lessons and that we might not be too quick to want to speed everything up to the rate at which we were used. The literal meaning, meaning here in, of the word translated uh, delay is to be late or as one of the commentators says it will not miss its appointment so so God says Habakkuk I'm going to do something and even though it may linger it may take a little bit longer than you would like or that you would wish it will happen it will not be late in happening it will be at the appointed time you know, the message to Habakkuk here, and it's a really encouraging message in the midst of the evils of life and the sufferings of life. Habakkuk is told by the Lord that the Babylonians would come and they would go. They will rise, Habakkuk, and they will fall. And it will all be in God's time, the appointed time. Though it linger, Habakkuk, wait for it. It will certainly come and will not delay. And you know, we say that 
about it happening in God's time and yet the thoughtful and maybe salutary uh, truth is that Habakkuk would not literally see the fall of the Babylonians. It's, it's, I think it's, it's very reasonable when we look at the dates and the times, uh, even though I'm not aware of, of a date for the, uh, the year that Habakkuk died. Uh, Habakkuk uh, would not see the fall of the Babylonians, but he would see it in faith. The Babylonians would sweep into Judah and the people would be carried off into exile. Uh, 586, 587 BC. And it would be nearly 50 years later when the Babylonians would fall. Historically, uh, for those interested in how that came about, it was in the year 539 uh, BC the Babylonian Empire came to an end when another empire swept in, the Persians. It was a long time, and yet it was God's time. It was not immediate, but it was God's appointed time. Think about this, folks. God is always on time. You might say God is never too late. Never too early. We often feel that time is running out and in many ways it is. We feel that sometimes in life events conspire to spoil God's timetable. But God is on course. It's a mysterious and a comforting truth, isn't it? And Habakkuk hear, hears this word here. Verse 3, though it linger, Habakkuk, wait for it. It will certainly come and will not delay. Is that a word for you this evening? A word that you need to hear? You're wanting everything to happen immediately, quickly. But that's maybe not the way it's going to happen. In God's time, wait on him. And you know, at the very heart of the, the message of the scripture, the good news of the Lord Jesus Christ, the message of redemption, Christ crucified and risen. And we remember those words of, of Paul in Galatians that when the time had fully come, in God's time, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under law, to redeem. And so then we come to Habakkuk 2 and verse 4. It's a significant verse. Notice how it begins. See, he is puffed up. His desires are not upright. Speaking here of these Babylonians, their puffed up nature, their arrogance, their pride. Literally that little phrase there, he is puffed up and his desires are not upright. Literally it says, behold, puffed up, his soul is not straight within him. Not straight within him. You see, a puffed up, proud, arrogant um, nature is, is something that's not straight. It's crooked. One thing leads to the other. The puffed up nature leading to a crookedness. And the crookedness, you might say, leading to further being puffed up and full of pride. In verse 5, if you just glance down to it, this arrogance, which is mentioned again at the beginning of verse 5, it says, indeed, wine betrays him. He's arrogant, never at rest because he's as greedy as the grave, and like death is never satisfied. So this puffed up nature, this pride, is, is linked with addiction to strong drink, and we know from history, like many 
civilizations, uh, sadly, that the Babylonians were sort of almost addicted to, to, to strong drink. But it's also linked to our restlessness, to greed, to a sense of never being satisfied. And all of these characteristics are, are often put together, aren't they? And you can, you can see them there in, in verse 5. Uh, that sense of being greedy and never satisfied and, and, and all of that. And yet in contrast to that kind of life um, full of arrogance and pride and restlessness and addiction and greed and all of those things, in contrast to all of that, we have here in verse 4 this very famous little phrase where it says but the righteous will live by his faith do you do you see the contrast that is being painted here habakkuk is being told that the babylonians will come and go that one way of living is the way of arrogance and, and pride and restlessness and addiction and all of these kind of words. But in contrast to all of that, the righteous will live by his faith. You could develop that in your own thinking, couldn't you? Two paths that you can walk in life. Two paths that people can walk today in 2020. The, the path of pride and arrogance and restlessness or the, the way of faith, a way that is crooked or a way that is straight, a way that leads to death or a way that leads to life. The second little part of Habakkuk 2 verse 4, it's, it's famous and significant, the righteous will live by his faith. Three words in the original. It's one of the commentators says this, and I quote, the phrase which became the watchword of Christianity is the key of the whole book of Habakkuk and is the central theme of all the scriptures. Another commentator says that this little phrase could even be called the great text of the Bible. So we're, we're, we're pausing here at this little phrase in Habakkuk 2 verse 4. It's a very, very significant little phrase. Indeed, it is so important that it's picked up three times in the New Testament. And I'm going to ask you in a moment to just take a moment to glance at these verses. It's picked up twice by Paul. Once in Romans 1 and also in Galatians 3. And it's picked up by the author of Hebrews in Hebrews chapter 10. So let's remind ourselves of what these verses actually say. Can I encourage you to uh, just turn to Romans uh, chapter 1 and verse 17. Let me read that verse for you. For in the gospel, a righteousness from God is revealed, a righteousness that is by faith from first to last, just as it is written, the righteous will live by faith. The Apostle Paul quotes these words of, of Habakkuk in that great letter that he wrote to the church in Rome. He's speaking of how we are not righteous, but that there is a righteousness that comes from God, and it is by faith. This, of course, is a text that really spoke to Martin Luther, who was so touched and changed and transformed by this message uh, that he was used mightily of God in the work of reforming uh, the church. The emphasis here in Romans is on how we're made right 
with God, how we're made righteous with God, not in ourselves, not because of what we do, not by our own works, but by grace through faith. The righteous shall live by faith. So do you see that? And then can I ask you to turn to Galatians chapter 3 and verse 11 and I'll read it. Another place where, where Paul picks up on, on Habakkuk's phrase. Galatians 3.11 says, Clearly no one is justified before God by the law, because the righteous will live by faith. And of course the letter uh, to the Galatians is a letter where Paul uh, had to deal with with a problem that came into the church where some people were, were going back to the law as a way of making ourselves right with the Lord. That really is an, an anathema to the gospel. Because Paul says, no one is justified before God by the law. You're not going to be justified before God by, by trying to keep the law, by trying to live an upright life person is made right by faith, by faith. So the emphasis in Galatians is on faith as opposed to the works of the law. And then the third place in the New Testament where this uh, phrase from Habakkuk 2 verse 4 is picked up is Hebrews chapter 10. So if you just glance over to Hebrews chapter 10 and verse uh, 38 says this but my righteous one will live by faith and if he shrinks back I will not be pleased with him but we are not of those who shrink back and are destroyed but of those who believe and are saved so again you can see how the writer um, of Hebrews picks up on the phrase from Habakkuk uh, the, the righteous will live by his faith, faith and the emphasis here in, in Hebrews is on a faith that endures one of the big themes of, of Hebrews is that these Christians who are from a Hebrew background and a Jewish background they are being encouraged to, to keep pressing on how will you escape Escape if you neglect such a great salvation? Don't be stepping back. Yes, you may be under pressure, but keep pressing on. And, and the emphasis in Hebrews is on, if you like, the endurance that springs from our faith. We're made right by grace through faith, but that faith is then to be worked out. It's not an empty faith. It's not a faith without works. Yes, we're saved by faith alone, but that faith is never alone because it's then worked out in a life where we press on, we persevere. And these three different places in the New Testament that pick up on Habakkuk chapter 2 and verse 4 and that, that phrase, the righteous will live by his faith, it's just a summary of the the path of faith. It's a summary of the, the Christian life saved by grace through faith and living by faith and pressing on by faith and persevering by faith and keeping going on despite the problems by faith. So for Habakkuk and for all of us, this message, the message to Habakkuk first of all and the message to us is that in the midst of difficult times, trying times, suffering times, believe in God, rest in God, trust God, cling on to God, believe in his promises even though you do not see these things, even though you will not see them literally in your time. Rest on them. Believe them. 
the righteous will live by his faith. Just a few days ago on Monday, it was great to see um, our Prime Minister Boris Johnston uh, back at uh, 10 Downing Street and we thank the Lord for his recovery and we trust and pray that our Prime Minister will in time thank the Lord for his recovery. And one of the things that he was speaking about was the need for the nation to show patience to curtail our impatience and to be patient. And Habakkuk is being taught here and we're being taught uh, through this prophecy to wait patiently on the Lord. In dark times, wait upon the Lord. In anxious times, wait upon the Lord. In days of decline, wait on the Lord. In times of sickness, wait on the Lord. In times of depression, wait on the Lord. In times of tragedy, wait on the Lord. In times when we're tempted to, to question God's ways. Wait on the Lord. In times when we're tempted to question God's time. Wait on the Lord. God's day will come. It will not delay. Believe God. Trust God. Cling on to God by faith. You know, folks, even as I say that, I'm conscious that for Habakkuk, and I, I don't literally know, as I've already said, uh, what the year was that, that Habakkuk uh, died. He would have seen some of these things, but he wouldn't have seen all of them. And you know, you and I live whatever time God has allotted for us. And we're living in a, in a time, aren't we, where maybe it's just every day we're hearing about the number of deaths. And it certainly makes you think about your own mortality. It makes you think, Lord, how long am I going to be? In this world. I may not die of the coronavirus but I am going to die. We all tend to think that our own end is further down the line than it may be. I'm not trying to be scaremongering or overly morbid. I'm just literally saying that it is wise to think about your own mortality. And Habakkuk was being told that he wouldn't literally see all of this. But he does come to a place of acceptance. And in life that there, there are many things that you and I will not literally live to see. But we cling on to God. We wait upon God for things maybe to do with our own personal circumstances, to do with our own families, children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren, maybe to do with some other things. And we can either go down the road of saying, well, Lord, and become terribly anxious about the whole thing, we get down about the whole thing or we can say the words of Habakkuk the words given to Habakkuk the righteous will live 
by his faith. There's, a, there's an awful lot here, isn't there? So much. But tonight, really, the heart of the message is Habakkuk, I've heard your prayer. I've heard your cry. And Habakkuk, in my appointed time, I will do what I'm going to do. Believe that. Rest in that. Find your peace in that. Because the arrogant, puffed up crooked of this world will come and go. But the righteous man or the righteous woman will live by faith. So much here and we're going to leave it at that and God willing we'll come back uh, next week and uh, look at a bit, a bit more at the rest of Habakkuk chapter uh, 2. As I've been doing I'm going to lead us in a short prayer and then as I've said before maybe you're watching this you're on your own just take a moment to pray as the Lord leads maybe you're with some other member or members of the family. Take a moment to pray in light of what God has been saying through his word and just to pray again for the situation that we're in, for our nation and our government and for the church in these days. Just for a sense of God leading us by his spirit as to what he is doing and what he would want us to do. So let us pray. Father, teach us this lesson that the righteous will live by his or her God-given faith. Lord, those of us who are going through dark days, strengthen us in this faith. And for those of us for whom things are not too bad, prepare us, O God, maybe for darker days, difficult days. Build us up, O God, in our faith. Strengthen us. Give us a faith that is able to endure and to persevere. Lord, I think of the words of that lovely old hymn. Oh, for a faith that will not shrink, though pressed by many a foe, that will not tremble on the brink of poverty or woe, that will not murmur nor complain beneath the chastening rod, but in the hour of grief or pain can lean upon its God. Father, what comfort, what strength, what encouragement. Lord, build us up in these things that we may know that we have been saved by grace through faith and that we are living by faith until that day when you call us home. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.